Hi, this is James from the Hornbill Technical Support and this is a short video to show you how to use the update call rule within the email autoresponder. Uh, as you can see here, I'm using the SupportWorks 7.5.0 client and this is Service Pack 3, but this will apply to any current version of SupportWorks. Okay, what I'm going to do is going to take you straight towards the SupportWorks server configuration tool and uh, the first thing we need to understand uh, in regards to any autoresponder rule is how the email comes in. First of all, we'll need to make sure that um, the email of which is coming into your mailbox uh, meets this particular rule to be able to pass across to autoresponder. If you haven't already seen the other videos that's been created in terms of the uh, log call rule video and the email uh, overview, you may wish to view them first before proceeding. So in the email routing rules tab, um, if your subject has anything, so percentage marks means the uh, wildcard, uh, then it will forward the message onto SupportWorks as the autoresponder request. So as that mo moves past that stage, it's going to go into the email autoresponder. The first thing you need to make sure in this particular tab is that the update call rule appears first. So as I've explained on the log call rule video, um, the update call rule must be first as if your rules are quite generic in terms of uh, what appears within the uh, subject line, you don't want suddenly duplicate calls to be logged. So within the update call rule, it will give you a particular condition here. Um, you can use this condition but um, I do suggest you use something slightly different. Um, this particular one is looking for the word update call within the subject, but you would also need to amend that to um, also look for the reference number. So I'm going to change this to subject like percentage F0 percentage. So anything with the reference number obviously will begin with F0 and wildcard with anything around it. I'm going to choose my particular data dictionary which is ITSM. If you're using ITSMF or even the HR data dictionary obviously you will need to select that. These other settings on the left hand side here you do not need to worry about because these are only specific for the log call rule. The email mailbox settings obviously you will need to have a look at. Um, by default it will set it, set it to the confirmation of call update which will give you certain information on that. Um, on the service control table instead of control bit 9 which is on the on the log call rule it's uh, 10 on the update rule um, so I'll give you more information around that now if we just OK and apply that. So within your customer record. I'm just going to double click. You'll need to make sure that you've got the particular right to be able to update requests. So if I go back to the update call rule. So as long as uh, this condition is met and you have the particular access rights to be able to update the call from email, uh, the one remaining um, rule that you'll need to make sure that you do match before uh, proceeding is that you can only update uh, your own calls. So if your particular contact with your email address is on a call and someone else emails in to try and update the call, it will reject it and it will send the failed template. So this is part of the VPME process which is AR update call. It will try and match the call um, with the email address that's been sent in. So you don't need to make any changes within the OK action and fail action. I'm just going to click OK, apply and OK again. And I'm also going to send in an email to test it out. So here's my email. If I just remind myself of the reference number that I've already logged through this process. I'm just going to put the reference number and call update and send. And we're just going to wait for this to come through. So remember the email will go straight to your Exchange server. Uh, Supportbox will pick it up through a POP3 or IMAP4 connection. 
then it'll go straight to the email routing rules that will determine whether it is an autoresponder request or not. It will then read your rules from top to bottom. So as it matches your rule, I'm going to have a quick look at the call to see if it's updated and here it is. As you can see the call has been updated, call update, and uh, it says who also who it's been done by. So that's a simple rule. Um, you may need to play with it uh, just to get it correctly um, configured. Um, it's very powerful, you can get it right. Uh, any problems, please leave a comment.